Welcome to the History Hunter. Welcome to our small adventures with the World War II time frame. We are out on the Atlantic Wall. We are going to find a very unique location. Are you ready? Let's go out and find the pass together right now. You know, when people think about the Atlantic Wall, you think about the massive gun positions at Normandy beaches or, you know, Calais, all of that. But you know, the Atlantic Wall was tens of thousands of structures planted or Hitler ordered them. He said, I want to fortify the complete coastline during this or along this coastline area. And uh, they built. So he said, build and they built. And they built tens of thousands of structures. And it's unreal to see the variety of the different uh, features and positions. And this is a very unique position because it has a split, a kind of history. And yeah, it's snow. This is on the side where there's no sun. So it's actually very, very cold. But you wouldn't believe it when you see out these, this forest hill that there is actually something here, but there is. And that's why we are here and we're gonna share that with you. A set of stairs here tells us that there was actually something going on in the forest here. And believe me, there was a lot of action here. And that thing is actually a barrack foundation. So that means if you find stairs, you find a barrack, you know for sure that there were German activity in the area. See here, a little clearing in the forest. This was actually the uh, parade uh, kind of flat surface area. This is where they collected all the soldiers when they wanted to have a camp through and all of that. And you can see another very, very special foundation here. And there are tons of different features here. As I said, you just have to find them. And the barrack foundation is nothing else than a place where the soldiers could actually feel that they were home. It was their home away from home. And that's what you see here. couple of stairs, so Hans, Friedrich and Wilhelm, they actually stepped up here, just as I'm doing now. Then they entered their barrack and they were protected inside here. There were not that many trees during those days, much smaller trees, but this is their home away from home. And this is where they could sit down, talk about what happened in the fatherland and maybe they had a Wochenschau, a little film reel showing what's going on. Some propaganda films shown. This, you can see, this is a part of the sewer system, which is here. And there are tons of other features here. And there's actually running tap water in this uh, barrack area. And I think that this little structure that you see here could have been the um, uh, place where they had either a washroom, shower room, also a toilet perhaps. Eagle Eyes is taking part in the winter war. He has rigged up a makeshift. He's on the eastern front. He's taking cover behind some makeshift fortification out in the forest. The enemy is coming out there. He's loading up his Mauser rifle and he's really, really eager to see if the Red Army is coming up the hill here. Cool. <laughs> Very nice, Eagle Eyes. Wow, we are getting up to some of the spectacular details that is on the top here. If you take away all these trees, you can barely see the ocean down there. And that's basically what it's about. You have a high vantage point and they have the possibility to actually take out the enemy's vessels out there in the ocean. So there's a square cut out right here. I haven't got a clue what that is, but over here is where the very special thing starts to happen. Up here, this is where the Germans converted a older gun position to become a 10.5 centimeter German standard type of gun position. What is here is actually 
I'm not too mistaken, that is a munition bunker. Let me see. Yeah, in here, you can see here how they put it into the terrain. And this on the side here is a splinter wall to protect it so it didn't get splinters into the munition storage. And the munition storage is just a tiny little, you can see here. That's the tiniest I've ever seen. Yeah, it's a very small one. And this is basically what is for, this is created from early time before the Germans came, but the Germans actually used it also as a munition storage. But if you have a look up there, you can suddenly see that there is more going on here. And that is basically the gun position where the Germans put a 10.5 centimeter. And do you remember, Eagle Eyes, how far can that fire? 12,000 meters. Yeah, and how many? Five rounds in a minute. 12,000 meter and five rounds a minute. That's a good thing to remember. He's very clever. So now we're gonna go up to the 10.5 centimeter gun position. Yep, up to the 10.5 centimeter gun position, Eagle Eye. He is taking cover and preparing for the worst. This is original ammo storage as well, pretty big. The strange thing is that it was not more than a 5.7 centimeter gun here before the Germans came. <clears throat> and then the Germans came and they said, you know what, we can place a 10.5 centimeter gun here. And that's what they did. There's a little swing there. You can try that, Eagle Eyes. <laughs> Be careful, swing time. And now you can see what this is all about. See this little straight here? If the enemy come in from either here or here, what they will meet was no resistance before they kind of almost passed through this area. Let's see if I can kind of get you in here so you can really understand what's going on. We are right there. Yes, I have a pointer. We are right here. And uh, there's the barracks, there's the gun position. And this is a waterway where the German subs, like this one here, would have a possibility to either come in from here or in here to a huge U-boat pen, which is there, illustrated by this wonderful little model. And this place worked in conjunction with a German position that was here. Uh, I think it's either here or here, the other one. And this one here had this high vantage point on top of the mountain. It has this gun position and it has kind of different features with a flak 20 millimeter. And there's a little thing on the bottom here at the harbor. We're gonna see that later. But basically these locations are to protect the waterways where the German subs would go into the pen because this is also the path that the allied invasion could come or any attacks from commandos or even uh, allied subs coming in this way here. So that is basically what's going on. And then this position would start shelling them insanely much and then the enemy would most likely turn back or try to go this way. But there are two other gun positions further out there. So there were four gun positions in a system that was prepared to make a little ambush uh, tactical move to prevent the Germans, sorry, the enemy to pass this area. So there's one there, there's one here, there's one over there, and there's one over there. So with these four um, forces, they were capable of taking out whatever vessel that could come this way. And this was also the control bunker for the minefield. Yeah, you heard right. There were dozens of huge sea mines on this crossing here and this thing underneath us here the, they, these guys in here they took care of that so they had this insane view you can see it here this crazy view and by this view they had full control of what happened in this this is like where four waterways are meeting in this kind of area here and then when the mines we're out here, they could decide which mines to activate or not. So, pretty spectacular. Look at this thing here. It's been sealed off, but now it's open. That is gonna be awesome. Let's go down and see if we can check it out inside. It's just one room, but you know what? I want you to see it. Is it ready? Boom. It's Let me see. There we go. It's weird. One see that? room only. It's just brick wall, but I think that's the original beds that the soldiers used. They are actually still laying there. 
And it's just this tiny empty room with bricks. But that is amazing to see. Looks like it's water inside. Yeah, some water, some rocks, but that is the original bed <laughs> systems that was here. And that is crazy to see. Let me show you. This is the control center for the mines. And then we have the Mannschaft bunker there. Heavy duty cast into the mountainside. We have the gun position uh, further up there. We have one, two, three, four, five. We have the Appellplatz right there. Wow. There is most certainly history here. And look at that. We have sunshine again. Oh my goodness, this is such a great place. And I'm so glad you're with us. Did you know that you can become a World War II History Hunter team member and the artifacts here could be passed on to you? In this manner and fashion here, by creating beautiful World War II dioramas and displays, you can be the future keeper of something very, very special by the history and the history hunting that we share together. Check out the link in the video description. You can click that and you can become a Patreon team member if you want to. Different kind of perks with For Your Eyes Only videos, travel vlogs, restoration projects, all of that good stuff. And if you want to know more, check out the supporter videos in the beginning of each month but now let's continue our little adventure all right so this is the mind control post and uh, that is spectacular look at that it's heavy duty built such that's like a meter plus and this is where the both the Germans and the local military they took advantage of this post here Let's have a look at it from the front side. Yeah. There you can see that's the opening of the mine control and observation post. And that is rather spectacular because I'm going to show you this. This is the ocean line and you can see the mountain on the other side that was fortified as well. And you can imagine how difficult it will be to be an allied vessel coming in here. This is what it was all about to protect the waterways here. And that's why the Germans were here. They found out that this position is highly sought after. And we have to remodel it. We have to do it the way we want it to be. And they did. And today, the only thing we can see is the remnants of that activity. And we're very glad we can do that. There's the opening. Let me show you something here. Are these the cables that activates the mines? I think it is. Holy pancake. They go straight into the ocean. Are you freaking kidding me? Let me see. There is a ton of cables here. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wow. Eagle eyes. This is interesting. These are the cables that the crew could activate activate to to activate the mines that was out there in the uh, in the ocean this is so steep absolutely crazy you have to be careful don't fall into the water but look at that that is very very special history for you so you have these heavy duty cables running down from the control center for the mines i've never ever seen anything like that so they are coming out from this position can you see that wow that is just absolutely cool and then coming in here I'm gonna actually let you see as much as I can so we have this room here I guess eagle eyes could squeeze in here but there's no point it's just a couple of rooms I think it has been open for a very long time and then suddenly they shut them but can we see the cables are there any type of gear Hope you can see that. I can't. <laughs> the screen is... Well, I can flip the screen. Give me a second here. I'll flip the screen and I see... I can't see the cables. I can see a lot of rubble. But that is cool. So imagine... These guys were in here. And they were heavy duty protected by this thing here. And what they could do is that they could sit in here and they could uh, watch the ocean line and at the right given moment, who the heck put the cables down there? That's what I want to know. Holy cow, that means that somewhere down there, all of these cables, they are running down here into the terrain 
because it's not electricity feeding this um, this this bunker. This is the actual actuating uh, cables for the mine. I'm, I'm babbling, but I, I've never seen this before. I'm very fascinated by it. I want you to take really good part in this. You can learn from it. And uh, what a cool experience this is. Um, this is where we are. We have this little bunker and you see cables coming down. And you can see this straight here is too wide. So we learned after that they actually had mines here and they had mines here. So you have the bunker, you have the cables, and I, I would assume they have cables going out here and these mines would be held down and the cables would be able to activate the different kind of mines here. And, and the same at this here. And remember the sub pen, where the huge sub pen was, that is in here. So this is the whole point of this position here. That is to be able to take out the enemy at no matter what cost. So you have first you have anti-aircraft guns to take out aircraft, then you had huge guns to take out vessels, and then you have minefields to take out vessels and I guess even submarines. So this was very, very, very solid. And this is what it was all about. It was to protect that investment. Hitler's you know, Hitler was obsessed with his submarines and he said, we need to protect them at any cost. And this is the result of that. How cool is it to see that these, these details are still here, these cables in the ground, it's, that is just amazing. All right, enough of that, let's go back. Because now I've learned a little bit more. And then I do really realize how powerful this, <coughs> sorry, how powerful this protective line of mines would have been because if they could have controlled it i guess electronically then they could pinpoint exactly which mine to hit and maybe they could have the whole minefield intact just like maybe four or five of them go like boom if a vessel was hit and then still the other ones intact i don't know holy cow this is freaking interesting but Wow, would it be cool to go down there and check out what or where the cables comes out, but uh, I guess not today. Oh, I'm loving this. Let's check out this thing from the top side. But look at that. That is a spectacular piece of uh, war machine right there. Very, very glad we had the opportunity to share that with you. And you can see now it is really ugly here. The weather is pounding us with hail. And we're gonna go further down. I think there'll be a lot of wind, but it doesn't matter. We are here to share with all of you and it's our honor and pleasure to do so. Yeah, that is a near defense position, a foxhole, very strategically created on the top here. And it looks like nothing, but this is a formidable position that the Germans utilized everywhere they went it looks like just a tiny little spot but imagine a guy with a machine gun there just imagine something wait a minute i'm gonna let you see this by eagle eye so hans eagle eye he's now hans and he's being attacked fire and he goes crazy and this little defensive position has, has a huge advantage you see this eagle eye he now has the full overview of the area there's no way the enemy can come up this mountainside because if everybody knows this if you have a high vantage point well guess what you can fire down but the enemy can't fire at you so this very tiny little hole is so insignificant in its appearance but the power of this little location maybe with a couple of hand grenades throw a hand grenade like that, boom, the enemy, they will struggle really, really hard to get up this hill. Thank you, Eagle Eyes, for your illustration. Perfect. It's actually a Mannschaft Bunker made by the local army. And then the Germans came. Of course, they utilized it as well. So if I get closer here, you can see there's this thing here and there's actually a hole. And I have this tiniest little flashlight that we just discovered we had. <laughs> so. I'm gonna use that flashlight and we're gonna see what is in there. I'm guessing just a lot of nothing. Oh my Lord. Okay, I get it. This is where they have stacked the beds. All the bed frames for the uh, fortress is here. And if you see here, that is all the spiky um, barbed wire fence poles. 
So they have actually been collected and put in here. And you can see all of that. I can see German barbed wire. Oh my goodness, so that's what they're using this for. You can see a couple of sinks on the side. But most important, look at that. That is, oh sorry, this flashlight doesn't like to be on for a very long time. Uh, I guess that's it. <laughs> no more electricity in that. But you can see it. Original bed frames for the uh, soldiers and uh, barbed wire piled up there. Amazing. So down here at the harbor, this was basically something that was built to take care of business, you could say, on this end. <laughs> um, beautiful uh, designed little uh, harbor here but there's a little feature right there and to me that looks like a very that is not a German build I think that's for the locals but of course the Germans would definitely utilize that but it looks like there are firing slots out from many directions either that or there was once upon a time a wooden construction inside there and this is just a protective measure around a wooden hut so i'm gonna go inside and check it out and see if i am right and there will be kind of like a, yep this is a little wooden hut you see here the line and they would put the first plank there and you see the cutouts eagle eyes these are to protect the building which was inside here and this is where the windows were so this is the vessel control facility for uh, from the local um, Kriegsmarine naval army in this area so they could check up on uh, vessels coming in and out so it's not a fighting position from uh, from the start off it was just a place where there was a barrack but I guess you know I know the Germans they would have utilized this for something special and I'm guessing they would rig up this thing with a plank kind of thing here and put up machine guns to be able to take out any vessels that would come kind of around here either that or they would use this use it as a administrative administrative kind of feature to have control of the vessels when they were here so let me see here Ooh, that's a drop right into the ocean. This is the front side of it. Yeah. But I guess this harbor here proved to be pretty spectacular and pretty important, I think, because this harbor was pretty deep, so they could have MTBs, motor torpedo boats, or other kinds of vessels mooring With up that here. Background on there. The inner side here, perhaps. And the uh, Mannschaft bunkers in the mountainside, the 10.5 centimeter gun position that was converted to a pack garage, and the German would pull that pack gun down here if needed. Amazing place. As I said, if you haven't watched part one, please do. You see that mine control bunker? That was spectacular, huh? You guys? Yes, yes, yeah. Yes, and yes. to find that plate, that was very, yeah. very exciting. It's just a tiny little detail, but we go crazy when you see this. And this, if you don't know this is here, you will never find it because you really have to do a lot of research and then you really have to go into the terrain. And we spent uh, like three hours here now and we're going to spend rain. at least, with rain, yeah, and hail, and we're going to spend at least 40 minutes to get back to where we came from. So it takes a lot of time. Hope you appreciate it. Yeah. Other than that, enough from History Hunter and Eagle Eyes. Eagle Eyes. <laughs> <laughs> we will definitely meet you out there in the next one. Thank you, Eagle Eyes, for your incredible support to your old grumpy dad. <laughs> Thank you for helping me out. Absolutely fantastic. Or not, see you later. Thank you for watching and see you later. Bye bye.